Hey guys, we're going to pick up where I left off the last time in Extinguishing the Inferno with Anger, my newest book. So we're going to pick up on the second half of chapter one. Self-exaltation and self-abasement are not different as they are of the same root. This is vital. It was revelatory to me when I first figured that out. In this, anger is not the issue, but pride is. Pride is the root of all evil, and it is the original sin. Pride arose in Lucifer in the form of jealousy and anger, desiring to be greater than God, or, at the very least, equal to God. Pride arose in Eve to have more knowledge and power. Pride arose in Cain in the form of jealousy and anger, causing him to kill his brother. Pride is defined in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary as the quality or state of being proud, such as an inordinate or disproportionate, same thing, self-esteem, conceit, delight, or elation arising from some act, possession, or relationship. Now that we understand this, we can recognize that these self-appointed self-help gurus, although well-meaning, point people in the wrong direction when attempting to get someone to feel better about themselves. When we purpose to feel better about ourselves, we begin to feel entitled, if, if of course we don't already. The goal in treating anger, then, is not to feel better about ourselves, but to get to know the God who gave us his Holy Spirit so as to direct us from a heavenly perspective. Attempting to find help from within ourselves is rubbish and utterly ridiculous. We don't need more self-esteem. We need more God-esteem. This means we will choose to be self-disciplined and self-controlled, and that can only come supernaturally. Such an achievement can be delivered only through seeking the wisdom and knowledge of the one who created us in his image. Jesus was angry on occasion, but he knew instinctively what to do with it. He was inherently able to distinguish the difference between uh, righteous and unrighteous indignation. Since Jesus is our life, if in fact he is your life, we are to conduct ourselves as did he. We are to allow Jesus to be himself through our mortal bodies, not attempt, to be, attempt with futility to act like Jesus. In the acting, which gets us, it's the acting which gets us into trouble because we become nothing more than a cheap imitation of Christ. Where Jesus was spiritually, mentally, and emotionally while walking in human flesh is the same place we should seek while walking in a world full of filth, condemnation, shame, lies, deceit, and wickedness. This cannot occur in our own strength as it is humanly as it isn't humanly possible. Contrarily, when we seek the face of God and purpose in our hearts to surrender to his will and his ways, it is altogether possible to overcome anger by not allowing it to morph into sin. The words listed at the top of the chapter, which we didn't read them last time, it's about anger and things like that. Um, these are all intertwined. Let me go back and read them. They are, um, I wrote the definition of, if you can see that, Anger, indignation, bitterness, wrath, rage, malice, clamor, and slander. And these are the ones I'm talking about, that they're all intertwined. One of them will lead to the other if we are not conscientious about our plan of action so as to eliminate them from ourselves. Next, we will research the Word of God and break it down as simply as possible so as to discover liberty from anger turning into sin of malice, rage, slander, rebellion, retaliation, or anything else of the like. And that is the end of chapter one. When we come back, we will start chapter two, which is the emotion of anger. It's a big deal. Hope you guys have a great rest of the week.